Hey friends and welcome back to Amanda Marie NP where my goal is to help you in your healthcare journey. So if you're on a journey and would like some tips to help you be more successful, then go ahead, subscribe below and let's jump into today's video. Today we're going to be covering how to learn the human bones. I'm going to be giving you some fun and funny tips to help you memorize the skeletal bones. If you find yourself in your anatomy and physiology or maybe a biology health science prerequisite and you need to learn the bones of the body, you've stumbled on the right video. So when you're born, you have 270 bones. And as you begin to age and you're almost an adult, a lot of those bones have fused together and you're left with a whopping 206 bones. This sounds rather overwhelming, like you're never going to be able to memorize all the names of these bones and where they're located. But I have some fun tips in this video to help you do just that. Okay, we're covering all the major bones and we are starting with the skull. The top part of the skull is called your cranium. And an easy way to remember that is that a crane can open your brain. Crane and brain rhyme. And you also can remember that you place a ball cap on the top of your head. C in cap and C in cranium. Next, you have your mandible or your lower jawbone. A funny way to remember this is that if a man's mouth is moving, He's just sharing some bull, mandible. Or you can remember that M equals mandible and M equals mastication, which is chewing up your food. And you do this as your mandible moves up and down. You masticate your food. The top bone of the mouth, the upper bone, which connects to the mandible is called the maxilla. There are three bones in your ears. They are called the incus, malus, and stapes. Next, we see the clavicle. The clavicle bone is also called and referred to your collar bone. The best way to remember this is when you pop your collar, you are using the bone C and you are C, C and C, clavicle and collar. And this, my friends, is the center bone right in the middle of your chest. It connects all your ribs together. The way to remember this is to picture a big, gruelly guy standing up who's hitting himself in the middle of the chest and getting stern. The sternum is divided into three sections. The top part is called the manubrium. The center part or the long middle part of the sternum is called the body. And the bottom of the sternum is called the xiphoid process. Next, we see here all of the ribs. This could be an entire video in and of itself. So this may be a video for another day. Next, we see two bones that are located at the top of your posterior or back of your body. These are referred to as the scapula. They are your little shoulder blade bones. And a fun way to remember this is scap on the back. Again, this rhymes and it will help it to stick. Your scapula sounds like your back you love, scap and back. Next, what we see here is the vertebrae. Your vertebrae are broken into three major sections. At the top, the bones are called your cervical vertebrae. Then in the middle, you have your thoracic vertebrae. And just remember that your chest is also called your thorax. So that's the thoracic vertebrae area. And then in the very lower part, you have your lumbar vertebrae. Then at the very bottom down here, you have your sacrum. And a way to remember this is that the bottom area of your backside closest to your buttocks, well, that's a sacred area. Your sacred sacrum is located at the very bottom. Then right beneath the sacrum is a tiny little bone that is called your coccyx bone. And that is your tailbone down there. So it's the very last bone. Next, we have your arm bones. And at the very top of your arm is your humerus. It's a really long bone, a little skinny, and it's easy to remember because when you hit your humerus, also called your funny bone, it's not so funny at all. Definitely, it's not humerus. Next, we have two bones in the lower portion of your arm. The first one is called the radius. That's the top bone and your ulna is on the bottom. You can remember U for under if that helps you, and you can also remember that your radius is where the radial pulse side is, and that the ulna is way over here. Next in the hand, just as a general overview, we will start with carpals, 
And the way you remember that is you use your car poles to drive your car pole. Next, you have the tiny bones that extend out from the carpals, and these are called the metacarpals. And then for the fingers, those are called phalanges. It's such a fun little word. Funny side note, your toes are actually called your phalanges as well. Next, we have the pelvis and the pelvic girdle. The way you can remember this is that your pelvis, when you shake it, it looks like Elvis because Elvis shook his pelvis when he sung his songs. You know, kind of like, name nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> so when you think of pelvis, think of Elvis. Next, we see at the very top of your leg is your femur bone. It's the really long bone, just like at the top of your arm that was long. This bone you can remember because a woman will typically, if she's modest anyways, wear a dress that comes way down below her femur bone. That helps me to remember femur. Next, we find our patella bone, which is also called our kneecap. And then we have these two bones of the lower legs. One is called the tibia, and it carries a ton, T for ton, T for tibia, of the weight. Then we have the smaller bone there in the leg, which is called the fibula. Next, we're looking at the foot bones, which are called the tarsals. Remember, this is an overview. The hand bones were called the carpals, while the foot bone is called the tarsals. T for toes, T for tarsals. The bones that extend from the tarsals, I bet you can guess, are called the metatarsals. And just like your fingers, the toes are called the phalanges. I hope that this very simple overview of how to memorize the skeletal bones for your anatomy and physiology class has been helpful for you, and I hope that you are now committing to memory those human bones that you oh so desperately need to know. So if you are in your healthcare journey, if you're in nursing school, maybe you're a nursing assistant considering going to nursing school, then this is going to be the channel that you'll want to spend some time on. So go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Give this video a big like so YouTube pushes it out to other potential nursing students who need to have this content with them as well. All right, comment below what video you'd like to see next here and become an NP with me. I'm just an average Jane doing my thing and I'd love to help you along in your journey.